Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Looking forward to the discussion this afternoon. We're going to shift gears a little, but then I think it seems the discussion this afternoon may be a, a bit of a, a mix of topics. As Philippe was saying, this is not a you know, reactive campaigns here and preventive here, but there is a, a continuum and working together to figure out how that looks like given the circumstances we're in. So um, thanks for that. So I want to start here because we recognize we've all been working extremely hard over the past year um, in very difficult circumstances, unprecedented, I think has been thrown around. Um, but there are reasons to be hopeful and there are things to celebrate. So I just want to start here before we dive into more challenges. <laughs> so the things that we have accomplished just this year alone um, is that we have launched the preventive program at the beginning of the year. Uh, we've launched the market shaping roadmap in May, and these include 10 year strategic demand scenarios. All of these have been developed in consultation with many of the people here in the room. Um, the diagnostics funding window was open in May and already, actually I actually think it was June, and already, I think it was two weeks later in July, 13 countries had applied. And in fact, all of those were approved in this round of the IRC. So that's a huge credit to all of you for working very fast and recognizing what the need is and how we can work towards that. Um, the, the big announcement here as well is that DRC was the first country to submit a preventive application and it was approved last week. Um, recognize it's a huge amount of work, but it really allows for the planning that needs to happen for the next few years, both in country with the manufacturing on the forecasting to get where we want to go. So that's a huge accomplishment. And a few more are submitted in review, more in development. So it's it's really, there's been a lot moving on that front and it's a lot of the collective effort here. Um, the UNICEF tender is open. I also didn't know what tender meant when I started this job, I'll be honest. So what does that mean? It means that UNICEF is making the agreements with manufacturers for five years. So they've offered, you know, five, five year versus kind of a shorter term, longer term agreement, which is hopefully you know, going to help the market in the long run be more attractive for, for OCV. So we'll hear more about that this afternoon, though we, it's not closed yet. So that's why the supply discussions are a little bit quiet, but in a few weeks, we'll have much more information about the next five years. Um, and we've also been um, working on the supply allocation framework that is going to help at least you know, while we're in a supply constrained situation, how do we equitably and in an impactful way allocate the doses that we have for preventive use? So there's, there's a lot of work going on and just wanna start there, okay. So little snapshot of where things are with the preventive program. Um, I think this is familiar to many of you, so I'm not gonna dive into all of the details. Feel free to approach me after if you need more details. But just a reminder that it's a multi-year phased, typically phased campaign plan. And this allows also for countries to think ahead about what are the cold chain needs? What are the information system needs? How do we plan in a way that's you know, less disruptive to RI system? Um, and to have the financing set for years in advance to be able to make those kind of decisions and plans. Um, at the moment, for uh, there's no co-financing for the operational cost for the vaccines, as long as we're following SAGE recommendations. Um, and yeah, there's a few recommendations here, we'll get into those. So we have three countries for preventive vaccination approved through the previous mechanism through GTFCC. We have three in the review and approval process and we have a few more in the pipeline and I think there's conversations next week. So that's really encouraging. Um, Okay, this is a reminder, I brought it up on Tuesday, but I think there's more of us in the room here. And there was a question this morning, uh, what about surveillance funding? How can we access surveillance funding? So now that cholera preventive program is under Gavi's portfolio, countries have access to these other grants and other mechanisms for funding. So I just wanted to make a reminder of this. So we're now funding preventive campaigns, outbreak campaigns, the diagnostic tests, um, but there's these other what we call program support that's available. So that's health system strengthening, which is kind of a catch-all for the, the systems that are needed and information. 
cold chain. Um, there's TA funding available to partners, to countries, um, and other ways. So a lot of these grants uh, are usually managed by the EPI program. So it's also an encouragement. <laughs> yeah, Carol's giving me a look. <laughs> it's an encouragement to discuss what's needed for color control and see how some of those can be built into some of these other funds if needed. Um, okay. I hope you get these slides after because these are all links that I just wanted you to have access to the links. A very quick dive into the overall of the application for preventive and what's needed. These are some of the, the key documents you'll find on our website. You can go there for the links. This is the main document. If you're, if you're wondering what is the preventive program, what can I apply for, you look for this one called the Vaccine Funding Guidelines. Um, it's in, in English and in French. There's a section on OCV. It will tell you what you need to know. If it doesn't, let me know. We'll change it. Um, this is also a key document, which is what can I apply for in terms of costs, operational costs. So there's a budget guide and there's green is yes, go ahead. Yellow, we need some explanation. Red, probably not eligible. And you'll see here, do I have a pointer? No. Uh, there's one called OPS, which is the operational cost grant. So that tells you all of the types of expenses, what is eligible under this operational cost grant. So there've been questions about that. I just wanted to highlight that. This is the, all the application requirements. It's a bit of a long list. I think we'll go into this in the next session and hear how this process was. The key, key documents taking, I think, a lot of effort are the plan of action and the budget. Um, we did a webinar in July on all of these, how what they are, how to do the application. So I'll share the link with you. That's a resource for you. Also, the CSP team here is a resource for you on what all of these documents are, how to go through the process. So. Um, I wanted to add a little light to how these applications are reviewed so that it, uh, you know, we, we know what we're, we're aiming for, what are the reviewers looking for. Um, the IRC in general is looking at five overarching themes, and this is an independent group, um, so it does not include any alliance members, being WHO, UNICEF, Gavi. It's people outside of that group who can be on this pool of reviewers. Um, so they're looking for the public health benefit, they're looking for system strengthening, sustainability, how does this program fit into the broader health system goals. Um, the justification of the decisions, for example, the rationale for selecting certain areas to vaccinate, uh, which vaccination strategy, how many teams, um, and then the soundness of the approach, country readiness, feasibility, I think is going to be a big one, given these are larger cholera vaccination campaigns than we've done before. So, you know, is are there enough refrigerators even at the central level to receive this number of vaccines, things like that. Um, and then likelihood of achieving the results that are, uh, you know, the objectives set in the plan, will the plans meet those objectives and contribute to Gavi's overall uh, mission? So on the dates, um, these are this year's dates. There will be, I think, four windows next year, four opportunities to submit. Um, we are working on getting those dates to you as well as talking among GTFCC to make the review process a bit smoother. So please hold on for a little bit and we'll get you a clearer dates and review process and plan ahead for that, both for the, I'm looking at the country teams, but also our reviewers who are in the room who are going to help the country teams to prepare these applications to do some kind of technical review and make sure that you know they're following GTFCC guidance. Um, we will be discussing a little bit more kind of how to improve that process based on the last few applications uh, that we did and your feedback, both from, you know, um, reviewer side and countryside, I think we can discuss in the next section. Um, okay, so these are going to be my tips of how to uh, make a strong plan of action. And what the IRC has been looking for in this past review, we got a bit of a glimpse as to what they're what they're going to be looking for. Um, feasibility to implement is, is really the major one. Another is a clear program governance and management. 
how is this program managed between the different departments, divisions in the ministry, the different partners providing TA to make sure that that plan is, is clear and agreed upon. Um, that there's a clear prioritization of PAMIs. Luckily, we have a tool for that, but there may be some need to explain kind of final decisions around that. Um, thinking about plans for integration. So these campaigns are in the harder to reach parts of the country in general. So are there other services that are needed, other vaccines? Are there, um, you know, is, is there, I, I don't know, malnutrition screening? Are there other uh, bed net distribution? Who knows? There could be a number of, of ways to make these campaigns more um, efficient, more effective, not just for cholera, but for health workers' time and um, delivering health services. So think about what's feasible and what makes sense in your context. Um, preventive vaccination we know is different from reactive in terms of demand and interest in the vaccine. So really thinking about that, thinking about what are the community engagement strategies, what are gender barriers that may exist, how, how do we need to think about this a little differently and, and making sure that those plans are there and budgeted as needed. Um, yeah, clear target population, clear vaccination strategy, how many teams, where are they going, and making sure the budget is aligned uh, with those plans. Okay, this is my shout out from Tuesday to think big, and these are long-term plans. These are large investments. If you want to see also changes in the system of how, you know, you're, you're implementing cam many campaigns one after the other, there are longer term investments needed to make that process smoother. What, what are those? How can we use the fact that we have three or five years of funding to you know, make build stronger systems through, the, through this process? Um, okay, this was from the review meeting, uh, the last review meeting from the IRC. I just want to share with you kind of their, their feedback um, and the main questions. As you see, it was really around uh, on the left, on the your right, sorry, on um, justification of where to vaccinate, the timing of the rounds is that feasible? Does that make sense from an epidemiological point of view? Um, thinking as we were talking this morning about similar campaigns that may have been implemented in the same either security compromised areas or being oral campaigns, oral vaccines like polio. What can we learn from that experience? Um, how do we make sure that these campaigns are disrupting other services as minimally as possible? I think that was a very important question. Um, cold chain gaps, really just thinking about feasibility. These were some of the questions that were coming up. Okay, quickly moving on just to diagnostics. I wanted to share a, a little bit with you. Um, I think you've seen this before at the last meeting, but how, so Gavi approved uh, funding for cholera RDTs in uh, December of last year. Um, we're also working on more on the market shaping side for diagnostics to um, work to get improved uh, both RDTs, molecular tests to market. So that's part of this strategy as well. Um, we're also you know, funding quite a few studies on using the RDTs, how do we use them most effectively? Um, so there's a few pilot studies going on. There's also going to be learning studies happening after as these roll out in some of the, the countries that were approved. So this is really a, a process for us as a group to um, see how, how this goes in terms of rolling out expanded use of RDTs, how that affects the surveillance information that's available, what do we need to be considering, what do we need to revise, what do countries need to, to support expanding surveillance. So all those questions are there and the, the feedback uh, will come through some of these studies, but also I think through this group, it's very, very welcomed. Um, one of the main goals of having this expanded surveillance is, and this is why it's funded by Gavi, if you're wondering, is really to target how we use vaccines. So making sure that the vaccines we do have we're using uh, in the areas that need them most, both reactively, preventively in general. Um, okay, if you have questions, I, oh, I think everyone in the room has maybe applied for this already, so I'm gonna skip over this. If you have questions, let me know. 
Um, there have been some questions about kind of how, you know, we're working together between, you know, what is Gavi's role in this? Why am I presenting on preventive vaccination? Um, what is the role of this, um, of this task force? Um, and just want to emphasize, you know, those of us in the room really have the expertise to be guiding countries on the best way to uh, working together to, you know, develop these plans. Um, so GTFCC remains, you know, the primary technical advisor will be um, supporting kind of review in, in a back and forth kind of way as needed. Um, and supporting the development of the plans. And Gavi is more on the kind of review and approval side, and then you know, monitoring and supporting the implementation more on the grant management side. So GTFCC and will remain you know, the technical guide for this work. Um, okay, that's it. <laughs> um, just want to thank you, thank you all, and really happy to continue the discussion this afternoon. Thanks. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.